we're gonna go tackle this grand engineering challenge to build something nobody's built, to do something nobody's done yet. And I was like, I'm quitting my job, I'm taking a pay hit, let's try it, let's do it. The most dangerous part of building fusion is not the voltage or the radiation. It is the whisper that says, you're wasting everyone's time. In a plane warehouse, a startup called Avalanche chases the reaction that powers the sun, but they want it smaller than a Toyota Tundra. No giant tokamak, no billion dollar facility, just high voltage, magnets, fast rebuilds, and a team willing to fail in public. They hit early wins, slammed into a brutal instability, then found a clue in old Soviet experiments. Watch how doubt becomes a pivot, and how one bright flash rewrites the plan. The doubt. Some days, the team asked the question out loud, are we frauds? Fusion is brutal because you are trying to make a thing work that has never worked in your hands before. When the graphs do not move, fear fills the gaps. A founder can raise money, hire talent, and still stare at a machine that refuses to behave. Avalanche lived inside that pressure. They promised milestones, and then reality hit. They were not going to finish what they said they would finish. Worse, they did not even feel like they had a proper fusion machine yet. Stress turned into anxiety. The plan on the slide deck did not match the metal on the floor. Even the best days felt fragile because one bad shot could erase a month of confidence and momentum quickly. That is the daily grind. In fusion, that inner voice is loud. You are not good enough. You are wasting everyone's time and your team is losing faith. But the story starts there because doubt forces a decision. Either you quit or you learn faster than the fear can grow. Their bet was simple. Build small, test often, and treat every failure as a data point, not a verdict. Why fusion? Why small? The founders did not come from nowhere. One started at Blue Origin in 2014 and met Bryant while they were among the first 10 people working on the new Glenn reusable rocket. That job carried a dream. Millions of people living and working in space. It also carried a hard lesson. Chemical rockets alone make that dream painfully slow and costly. If you want a real space economy, you need energy that is dense, clean, and scalable. Nuclear looks like the answer, but launching a fission reactor brings safety worries and heavy systems. So their eyes went Tinto Fusion. Fusion is what powers the sun and, by extension, almost everything alive on Earth. In simple terms, you take light atoms and force them together so they become heavier atoms, releasing huge amounts of energy. Around 2018, one of them told Bryant, I want to do a fusion startup. Bryant wanted in. It meant quitting a stable job and taking a pay cut. At home, the message was practical. Get good insurance and please bring home a company hoodie. They looked around and saw that most fusion machines are enormous, and that size makes learning slow. Avalanche wanted rapid learning. They wanted a reactor smaller than a Toyota Tundra, so they could iterate like a startup, not like a national lab. The Orbitron idea. Fusion has many confinement schemes, meaning different ways to hold and heat plasma long enough for it to fuse. Tokamaks are the mainstream path. Stellarators are another big magnetic approach. There is also laser fusion. Then there are magnetic mirrors. And in a more niche corner, there is electrostatic fusion, where high voltage shapes the motion of ions. Avalanche treated this like early aviation. At the start of flight, people tried many wing shapes. Some looked silly, some failed fast, but a few patterns emerged and those patterns became airplanes. Their pattern was a hybrid. Use magnets to confine electrons, like a magnetron in a microwave. Use electric fields to confine and heat ions by pulling them into a potential well. Electrostatic heating can be wildly efficient on paper because voltage can apply a strong force over short distances. The catch is that pure electrostatic devices often struggle with losses and stability. So, Avalanche asked a sharp question. Can we operate between purely electrostatic and purely magnetic, taking the best parts of both and cutting down the worst parts? They called their approach the Orbitron. One founder went red pill on fusion, basically running a self-directed PhD. 
He read books, papers, and old reports until the concept felt real. The mission became simple to say and hard to do. Prove an electrostatic path can climb toward net energy. A warehouse, fast builds, real neutrons. The seed goal was clear. Build an orbitron, mostly electrostatic for ions and magnetic for electrons, and make neutrons with deuterium. They moved into a warehouse with about 13 people. They avoided multi-million dollar clean rooms. They used commercial parts. Speed was the advantage. In a giant reactor, one bad design can waste years. Here, a new design could happen in two or three weeks. They built the first machine, bolted it together in February, pushed it up to roughly 50 to 80 kilovolts, and saw fusion neutrons almost right away when they ran deuterium. That early proof mattered. It showed they could go from nothing to a working first Orbitron with $5 million or less. That success helped unlock Series A funding. But Series A was not about a janky demo. It was about doing things no one had done in electrostatic fusion. Increase the voltage per volume, what they call electric stress, so the field traps particles deeper and drives more collisions. Hit 300 kilovolts. Shoot more than a milliamp of ions into the machine. Integrate superconducting magnets. Then push plasma density to 10 to the 11 per cubic centimeter. The plan was like a rocket program. Prove each subsystem, then stack them together. They iterated through about 20 designs on the way to 300 kilovolts, building and breaking hardware until the lessons stuck. Getting Series A felt like two emotions at once. Yes, we did it, and oh no, now we have to deliver. With a bigger team and more money, the experiments had to stop being lucky and start being repeatable. The density problem and the Soviet clue. Then came the wall. In 2024, they were supposed to hit their density milestone, the last technical milestone for Series A. They had voltage. They had beam injection. Density refused to rise. Density sounds simple. In a fixed volume, pack in more ions that can fuse. But it is a three-part demand. The ions must be dense, they must be hot, and the condition must last long enough to matter. If you only achieve it for a blink, it is not a power plant. When they pushed for higher density, an instability appeared, a rotating mode. They compared it to a washing machine. Clothes clump on one side, rotate, and the whole machine shakes. In their plasma, that clump meant particles slammed into the wall. The plasma leaked out instead of building up. By April 202, 5, the mood turned dark. They admitted they could not stabilize it the way they planned. There was no clear path to net energy in sight. Still, they acted like scientists, not victims. They pulsed the cathode from 0 to 100 kilovolts to learn how the mode starts. The traces looked odd. Their plasma physicist, Eric, suggested the pulses might be spinning up the plasma and adding shear that could calm the instability. One founder remembered a concept from his turbulence PhD. Under the right rotational shear, messy turbulence can be ripped apart and a smooth flow can form. At the same time, a teammate named Jesus pointed them to Russian experiments from the 1980s and 1990s, including one called PSP2. Those experiments used strong current pulses to spin plasma quickly, and the shear broke up the turbulent mode. Suddenly, Avalanche had both a theory and an old proof that it could work. Jin, first light, and the number. Once they believed the idea, they moved fast. Friday became rebuild day. The weekend was for baking and setting up up. Monday was for tests. They added new electrodes, new probes, and different end caps. They fought vibration that was throwing results off and tightened parts to keep the structure steady. They named the upgraded machine Jin, after Jin Erso from Rogue One, the rebel who stole the Death Star plans. They were borrowing Soviet-era tricks to save their own deadline. The big day was First Light, the defining experiment, their Series A final exam. They expected a bright flash as the gas ionized. For a moment, a small volume of gas would be driven toward a fraction of the speed of light. Right before the shot, someone quoted Edison. Every failure still teaches you something. Another asked what separates a great scientist from a heretic. The answer was proof. 
Then the flash came, the room erupted, and the real win arrived later inside the data. After weeks of analysis, they measured about 4 times 10 to the 12 per cubic centimeter. They had beaten their Series A density goal by roughly 40 times. A month later, they were running hard, doing dozens of shots in a day, even 50 plus tests in one Friday. It did not mean net energy yet, but it changed the risk. The instability that made it feel like a doomed science project now looks like an engineering problem with knobs and schedules. So they kept iterating, aiming higher. More confinement time, more voltage, more energy, and a real climb up the triple product chart. Fusion does not reward confidence, it rewards persistence. Avalanche still has mountains ahead. Longer confinement, higher voltage, more stable operation, and the hard climb up the Fusion triple product chart. But their story proves something rare in energy research. A small team, using commercial parts and relentless iteration, can learn fast enough to change direction before time runs out. They faced the washing machine rotating mode, admitted they were stuck, and then used rotational shear to break it apart. From that, they reached densities once called impossible. Now the real engineering sprint begins, and that could reshape life on Earth.